XXZ here working on my 370Z. Very bored today, so I decided let me go down here, work on my car. I uh, just messed around with the shift knob, and then I'm looking at my Sparco seat. I'm like, I can use a little bit of adjustment. The seat was a little more than 90 degrees, and when you're driving, you're, lean, you're leaning a little bit more far back when you really want to have a more upright, especially on the track with the harnesses. Didn't get harnesses yet. Next in the build is a harness bar and obviously harnesses with an additional seat for the passenger. Right now I just got the Sparco Evo 2 US just to see how I would like it, how it feel driving around. And so far I love it, it's comfortable, it's stiff, FIA approved, um, everything you want. As far as a daily driver seat, don't recommend it. Going to the grocery store is a pain in the butt with it. But uh, yeah, let's go uh, look at it. First and foremost guys, when you're taking it out of the vehicle, ah, sorry for the mess. When you're taking it out of the vehicle, make sure you're careful with your side sills here. And uh, these are for my shoes, just clipping on it because the car's lower. Be careful with the side sills. I put a uh, moving, moving carpet, you get them for five bucks at Harbor Freight. Put it over here so you don't scratch anything up. So this is what I was talking about before. This is the harness for seatbelt switch, seatbelt buckle switch. Tells the SRS unit that you're buckled in when you are when you're sitting in the car. And this is the side airbag. I have a soldered and heat shrinked stock OEM-like pins into the stock harness, easily to remove, so I don't have to cut into my uh, side airbag harness in my stock seat, because if I wanted to sell the car again, put that back, I don't have to source another airbag or ruin the stock wiring on it, which increases the risk of, God forbid, any problems. Don't want to do that, so I'm going to make it nice and simple. Don't worry, guys, I'm going to vacuum this out before I put it back in. But, uh, yeah, my tutorial on that is available on the forums, but it's not my tutorial, I'm sorry. The tutorial on that is available on the forums. It's pretty straightforward if you're any good with wiring. Uh, I can do a video about it. Not an issue. It takes 10 minutes tops. Uh, granted, you're comfortable soldering. <sighs> so right now is these bolts over here. Look how scratched up it gets from the buddy club rails. It's like... It's, I don't know how to explain it. It's not the paint, but I guess this is just the straight plastic itself. You see it marred, but you don't feel it being marred like you would a, uh, a painted car. So I undid one side here. I'm gonna bring it down as gentle as possible. I'm gonna do this other side here. It's just a uh, number six Allen. You don't need to over tighten these because they are threading into a composite body. So use a gun, an impact gun, or anything that has a chance to over torque these. I think you're going to be doing more harm than good. Finally finished the install, and um, ugh, look at the scratches. I try to cover up with a sharpie, but I'll get some hobby paint to fix that later. But these brackets over here on the bride, not the bride. I'm sorry. These brackets over here on the buddy club install site to keep it like this, this orientation. Try to get a better angle of that at that orientation. The problem with that. When you have this like this on the front, on the front you get the perfect, you get the perfect height, you get the perfect height, but, but the seat rail doesn't match up with the mounting holes. The mounting holes on the front 
are a little bit more wide than the rear, right, if that makes sense. The rear mounting holes are 16 and a quarter to 16 and a half inches, while this one is a minimum of 16 and a half, so it's about half an inch off from uh, left to right. So if you had this bracket mounted this way with its maximum adjustment, um, even all the way out, or all, I'm sorry, all the way in, these are about 18 to 19 inches apart. And there's no way, there's no way you can make a Sparco, there's no way you can make a Sparco Evo seat fit inside a 370Z. Now this is, um, it's moved all the way back so I can get into the car. But right now it's um, just touching the headliner. But when I'm f moved fully over, f uh, fully forward in my track position, I f it fits perfectly. Side bolsters do not hit the door, even though it looks like it. I'm about 5'9", 200 pounds, um, with a little bit longer torso, and I'm muscularly built because I'm a mechanic. So I'm working on cars all day. I'm not skinny by any means. I'm not fat. Well, sorry. It doesn't matter. Cut that out. But, uh, yeah. Overall, the seat is amazing. The, the scratches on it are my fault, obviously. I mean, I didn't buy this to show it off and sit in a parking lot. I bought it to, I bought it to race in. Uh, very happy with it. Once I get the harness bar and the harness is in, once I get the harness bar and the harness is in, it's going to be amazing. This is the stock seat. It, at 100 miles an hour on a turn, it just doesn't hold you. But uh, yeah, this is my review on the Buddy Club. The Buddy Club super low down rails with a Sparco Evo 2 seat. Inside, a 370Z. Thanks for watching, guys.